Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1297. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about 11 Bitcoin ETFs getting approved by the SEC. 11 Bitcoin ETFs were approved the SEC voted on it, and by a vote of 3 to 2, it passed. That means the following companies are going to be offering ETFs. ARK Invest, 21 shares. Bitwise, BlackRock, Fidelity, Franklin Templeton, Grayscale, Hashdex, Invesco, Wisdom Tree, Valkyrie, and VanEck. Some of the ETFs started trading yesterday. So why do we need Bitcoin ETFs? Well, prior to spot ETFs being approved, Bitcoin ETFs were based on futures contracts. So what would happen because of that is sometimes the price would not be following what the spot Bitcoin price was. It could sell at a premium or a discount to the actual price of Bitcoin. That is until Grayscale won a lawsuit in which the judge had to agree that it didn't make any sense to only offer futures contracts and that if they approved futures contracts, the SEC should also approve spot Bitcoin contracts. So that's how we got here. Why would you want an ETF instead of just buying Bitcoin? Well, what it does is it makes it much easier for people to buy Bitcoin. So people who aren't crypto enthusiasts find it easier to invest in it, whether it's through their brokerage account and also in their IRA. And the sheer amount of money that can come in through IRAs and through brokerage accounts is enormous. So it will add to the buying pressure in the limited amount of Bitcoin that there is. Bitcoin has a total of 21 billion Bitcoin, but only about 1.8 billion Bitcoin trade actively. So it is a reduced amount and there is more scarcity there than the 21 billion indicates. I think this also gives some legitimacy to Bitcoin, whereas before there may have been doubts about it. And now with the SEC's approval, while they're not endorsing it and they're clear about that, they did approve it. So therefore, it does seem to give legitimacy to it. And definitely an ETF will be much easier than trying to buy Bitcoin directly through crypto exchanges and hold it in a cold wallet. All of that takes some education and study, and it's not the simplest of things. Once you get the hang of it, it's simple. But when you're first introduced to it, it seems very different from other ways of investing. And there is a steep learning curve at first. So what's the difference between all of these ETFs? Well, since ETFs of Bitcoin are going to be identical, the only thing that's going to vary is the fee structure on the ETF. That means everyone's investing in Bitcoin 100%. So there is no variation in the portfolio. If all of them are investing in the exact same investment and the same amount, that means only the fee makes the difference. So the important question to ask is who has the lowest fee? And that would be Bitwise. The symbol is B-I-T-B. The fees that Bitwise charges are 20 basis points, which is 0.2% annually. What's interesting with Bitwise is they're also going to take 10% of their profits and donate them to Bitcoin open source development. In their words, they're doing so because it will lead to improvements to the open source software underpinning the industry. So the organization that they are donating to is called Bitcoin Core Development. Bitwise has about six years of crypto experience, so they're very well versed in crypto and they're an all crypto company. So I don't see any reason why you would hesitate investing in the Bitwise ETF if that's something you want to do. My second choice would be the ARK ETF, which is at 21 basis points or 0.21% fee annually. 
Ark is also an experienced Bitcoin investor, and through 21 shares, they're offering the Bitcoin ETF with 21 basis points of fees. Now, when investments like this come out, there can be a lot of excitement and a lot of exuberance. And sometimes there's a buy on the rumor, sell on the news kind of an attitude, which means that the price tends to move up before these things are approved. And then once they're approved, the price tends to sell off. And I think that's likely going to happen here, even if it's a delayed reaction. But one thing that new investors to Bitcoin really need to understand is the volatility. Cryptocurrency is a lot more volatile than stocks, both on the downside and on the upside. So if you're not a person who can stomach volatility, this isn't for you. But if you are a person who understands that we are moving to a digital world, then maybe a portion of your portfolio could entertain a new asset class, which has been the best performing asset class of the last 15 years, and that's Bitcoin. I only recommend 1% to 5% of people's portfolios invested in cryptocurrency because it can be a great addition to your performance. It can add a tremendous amount to your holdings, and there's very little correlation to stocks, bonds, or anything else. Cryptocurrencies move in their own pattern, and they typically don't move in the same direction that stocks, bonds, and other assets move. And that's one of the things that professional investors love about cryptocurrency, is the gains have been spectacular over the years, and it's not highly correlated to move with other investments. So it's a good diversifier for just about any portfolio. And what I think is going to happen with the Bitcoin ETF now being approved is we're going to see a lot of institutions allocate 1% to 5% of their portfolio into Bitcoin. Some institutions have already been doing that, but that's more private wealth and family offices, some very wealthy individuals who have done that. Now I think we're going to see the sovereign wealth funds invest into cryptocurrency, and some of them already have. But now I think their investments are going to be even larger. Bitcoin isn't my favorite technology, but it does play a role. It is the original cryptocurrency. And while it has its limitations and hasn't been the peer-to-peer payment system that it originally was hoped to be, it has survived as a store of value and, as they say, digital gold. And after Bitcoin, the second largest cryptocurrency today is Ethereum. And Ethereum became important because it added smart contracts onto the blockchain. Smart contracts are the ability to give instructions for what you would like the cryptocurrency to do. So it allowed for more flexibility. But Ethereum has its own problems with high gas fees. So it also has not been the perfect cryptocurrency. But nonetheless, there's now lots of focus on is there going to be a spot ETF for Ethereum? And right behind that, all of us XRP enthusiasts want to know when is the XRP ETF coming? It's rumored that BlackRock is filing for an XRP ETF as well. So we may see that in the near future. Patrick Henry, who's the House Financial Services Committee chairman and the chair of the Digital Assets Subcommittee, said today's spot Bitcoin ETF approvals mark a historic milestone for the future of the digital asset ecosystem in the United States. And with that, history has been made. We now have a bridge between traditional finance and the world of crypto. And if you're interested in learning more about cryptocurrencies and which ones to invest in, their track record, and why people are finding them as interesting investments and what their future holds, check out my book, Three Steps to Quantum Wealth, The Wealth Heiress's Guide to Financial Freedom by Investing in Cryptocurrencies. And you can find it on Amazon and more information on my website at lyndapjones.com. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.